you guys i am so excited because today we are making an ornament like this one isn't that gorgeous so this is another no sew fabric ornament absolutely no sewing whatsoever this ornament is made by tucking panels of fabric into grooves and then adding trim and embellishments. It's really easy. Now, believe it or not, I actually made this ornament way back in 2011. It is 2019 right now at the time that I'm recording this. And back then in 2011, I actually wrote an ebook with step-by-step -step instructions. I still have that ebook available. You can get it completely for free. I am putting a link to that right below this video. If you want it, you can go grab it. This is the first time I've done a video though. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, today I have something kind of different for you. Instead of doing a quilted ornament, we're gonna be doing a tucked fabric ornament, also called Kime Komi ornaments. So this technique is a lot different than the quilted ornament technique um, in that with the quilted ornaments, we do folding small pieces of fabric and then pinning them into a foam ball base. Now, these types of ornaments are different because we're gonna be taking a flat piece of fabric and then tucking it into grooves that we've created on the foam ball. And then, as you can see, we will decorate it. And the possibilities for these are endless. They are so much fun. And we're gonna go through this step by step. So let's go ahead and talk about the supplies that you're gonna need. So first and foremost, you're going to need some fabric. So lots of different fabrics will work for this, but uh, usually the thinner, the better. You're not really gonna have a very easy time if you're trying to use something really thick. In this case, I'm using a satiny kind of fabric. It's not pure satin. It's got a little bit of a, I think it's got a little bit of polyester, um, but we're gonna be doing this. And it's kind of thin. It's a little bit easier to tuck. Now to cut the fabric into the right um, size pieces to put on each panel of the ball, so each one of these sections of fabric is in a panel going around the ball, you'll need a template, um, or you can kind of freehand it too, but a template will help. And I've actually created a template that fits a three inch foam ball. So if you look right below the video, you'll see a link to where you can go and get my template. It's totally free. Um, and then that will make your fabric cutting a lot easier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out six pieces of fabric using this template. You can see mine has been through it. There's <laughs> lots of holes. For all of my different ornaments, I label them so I can reuse them over and over again. So we're, we're, I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a moment. Now you're also gonna need a smooth foam ball. So I'm gonna be using a three inch ball. That is what is going to fit this fabric template that I was just telling you about. And we're gonna be dividing this into six segments and then cutting it out so that we can create grooves to tuck the fabric down into. Now, something that we carry in the Ornament Girls um, web store are these balls that are already pre-marked into the segments that you're gonna need to cut out. That makes things a lot easier. Now, don't worry if you do not have this kind of ball. We're, I'm actually gonna be showing you how to mark these six segments so that you could do it yourself on any ball. You'll also find it handy to have a very um, fine grit piece of sandpaper. That is just to smooth off any like rough spots on the ball and sometimes this equator line that you'll see on a lot of uh, smooth foam balls just because you may be able to see it through the fabric after you have put your fabric on. So I like to kind of smooth that out a little bit and that way I don't have to worry about that. You just want it to be a very, very fine grit, grit piece of sandpaper and you don't need a lot, you just need a tiny piece. You're also gonna want some trim for between the fabric panels and to cover up all the raw edges. So I've just got a little piece of trim here that I got at Joann's. Um, you can find this usually at almost any kind of uh, craft store or fabric store. And you're gonna need about 32 inches or so. So almost a yard. You're safe with a yard of this. You'll need a shorter piece of trim or something that you can use as your hanger. So this is about 10 to 12 inches long. You could use ribbon, another piece of trim, whatever you want. Now, if you want to decorate your ornament the way that I have, um, then you're gonna want some beads. I've got 18 beads on here, I believe, and I think that these are somewhere in the neighborhood of like six millimeter or something like that. Again, this could be anything that you wanted. You can really have fun with embellishing. And then also, I decorated with some teeny tiny little rhinestones in between of all the beads. So again, you can do whatever you want here. I believe I've got 24 or so rhinestones on mine. 
I also used some silver seed beads on the ends of each of my clear glass beads. Again, optional or you can do something different. You will also need a little bit of glue. This is a good one for gluing on fabric. Um, you will need this to glue your trim on in between of each section, each panel of your ornament. And then also depending on whatever embellishments that you're gonna be using, you may need some for that too. So like for example, on mine, I'm using these little rhinestones and you will need a teeny tiny amount of glue for that too. Now, if you're gonna do rhinestones like me, you may find it helpful to um, use a pair of tweezers in order to put those on. They can be a little bit intricate. In fact, I think putting the rhinestones on this one was probably the hardest part. Um, you don't even have to do rhinestones if you don't want to, but if so, this can really help. And you're gonna need some straight pins, like maybe 20 to 25 or so in order to put your beads on and then also to help you hold your hanger on as well. Now tools that you're gonna need. You will most definitely need a pair of scissors. This is so that you can cut out your fabric and then also a smaller pair of scissors, like a little tiny pair, will help with trimming up the edges after you've tucked fabric in. So you'll see what I mean when we get there. But a smaller pair of scissors, similar to these, is gonna be helpful as well. You're also gonna need something to tuck your fabric into the grooves. And you can use a couple of different things here. So we actually have a tool called a tucking tool. It is made specifically for doing this. We carry these in the shop. Um, you can use one of these or you could use a really thin butter knife. You don't want it to be too thick because you wanna be able to fit it into the grooves that you're gonna cut. But something really thin would work. I've even heard of people using things like nail files um, and anything like that that has like a flat blunt edge that you can tuck your fabric down into those grooves. Now, in order to cut the grooves in the foam, um, you can use like an X-Acto knife like this. As long as it's sharp, you want it to be sh pretty sharp so that it's easy to cut the, whole, cut the grooves into the ball. This is not sharp, so I'm not going to be using this. But um, one thing that I have found extremely helpful is a hot knife like this. So I've got this plugged in, it gets very hot, so if you have one, never, ever, ever touch it. Um, don't ever touch the tip. But this will cut through the foam like butter. <laughs> so if you plan on making a couple of these ornaments, you'll find this really helpful. And you can pick something up like this for about 15 to $20, uh, usually never more than that on Amazon. They're pretty inexpensive. It's definitely worth the investment if you plan to make a few of these. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with cutting your fabric. So make sure you've gotten your uh, fabric template. And let me just show you the way that I do this to make it as easy as possible. You could cut these out one by one, but that kind of takes a while. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fold this. Let's get back into the camera here. I'm gonna fold this into um, layers like this. So that I can cut out all six pieces at the same time and that's what you need you need six pieces now of course you can make this type of ornament with any number of panels that you want what we're doing here is the six and I'm just gonna grab a couple of pins and I'm gonna go ahead and pin right through all the layers of fabric so that this will stay in place And if it's hard for you to push the pin through, like what you're seeing happening to me right now, <laughs> feel free to only do half that at first and then just do it again. All right, so I'm gonna make sure that's smooth and now I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out. Oops, I'm trimming off part of my template. <laughs> so there we go, easy peasy. Now my template's actually a little uh, larger than what we're going to need. I just tend to like that better that way. I'd rather my fabric be a little bit too big for what I need because I can always trim it rather than be too small because you can't fix that. So you'll find that these pieces are just a little bit bigger than what you're going to need, but I will show you what to do with that. So now let's go ahead and get our ball ready. I'm going to set these aside. Now if you've got this kind of ball that is pre-marked, you don't have to do anything 
that I'm about to show you. But if you do not have a ball that's pre-marked, we're gonna have to make the markings so that we know where to cut. And we wanna divide this into six equal segments. So it's not very difficult to do. What we need is a long strip of paper, like this, I've just cut out a strip of paper. You can see I did a terrible job <laughs> cutting it out. But you just need it to be long enough that it will wrap all the way around the circumference of the ball. And you can always tell where the middle of the ball is when you have a smooth foam ball like this because there is a line running around the center kind of dividing the ball into two halves. So you've got kind of a um, two hemispheres. We always call this line the equator because on either half you've got hemispheres. <laughs> so you want this to wrap around the center there right along the equator. And you want it to be long enough to wrap around the entire thing and then what we're gonna do is just trim it. I'm having a hard time holding on to this right now. <laughs> you wanna trim it so that it is exactly that distance. And so what I'm gonna do, just because for some reason I'm having a hard time holding it, I'm going to wrap it around and then pin it like that. And then finding my pen, I'm going to make a mark right on the piece of paper where I need to cut it. And I have a piece of paper that is the exact length of the circumference of the ball. And now I wanna divide this into six equal segments and then I'm gonna use this as a kind of like a tape measure to put back on the ball and mark six equal segments on my ball. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this into thirds. So we're just gonna kind of eyeball it and try to get this into an even thirds and it might take a second if you're doing this uh, to divide a ball into eight segments it's a little easier because you can fold it in half but with six segments like this or even five it can be a little trickier but there we go so we've got it now folded into thirds which means that if we unfolded it we would have three equal segments but what we want is six so we're going to fold it back into those thirds and then we're going to fold it in half the whole thing in half like that so now when we unfold it we will have six segments and what i'm going to do just to make this easier to see i'm going to put a little dash mark at each of those folded lines Otherwise, when I go to put this back on my ball, it's going to be a little harder to see. And we don't want that. Okay, so now I've got all of my segments marked out. And I'm going to take this back to the equator line on the ball. And put a pin in the beginning. I'm going to wrap it back around that equator line. Pin it in place again, and then I'm going to just make a little dash mark on the actual ball where all of those lines fall. There we go. And now I can go ahead and remove those pins and then remove the piece of paper. And I've got all those, oh, that one's a little off. <laughs> but I've got marks marking out all of those equal sections around the ball. Now you'll also notice that you'll have a imprint at the top and bottom of your ball. We call those the North Pole and the South Pole. And just to make them a little easier to see, I'm going to put a little X over top of each one. Now here's the thing, not all foam balls have those imprints. Not all foam balls have these lines. So the ones that we've got in our shop do have these lines. Um, if yours do not, we do have another video that will show you a way that you can take a blank ball and find your own north and south poles and equator lines. So I'll put a link to that below this video as well. But I will tell you it is way easier to do these when you start with a ball that has all, that, all those markings on them already. All right, so let's go ahead now and draw those six segment lines. And for this, you're gonna need a flexible tape measure. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take one end of the tape measure and just pin it right alongside one of those north or south pole markings. 
and we're going to just bring this straight down beside one of those little dash marks that you made along the equator. Pin it again and then back down through the opposite pole marking like this. And then we're just going to take a pen and draw a line all the way around from pole to pole. And we're going to repeat this for every one of those dash marks. Now pen um, lines can be a little bit more messy. They kind of have a tendency to rub off on your fingers. Um, do, I'm using a pen so that it's easy to see in this video, but you could use other things too, like maybe a um, Sharpie that will dry quickly and not bleed all over your hands, or you could use like a fabric pencil or something like that. All right, and there you go. So now we've got six equal segments drawn on the ball. And these are the lines that we're gonna to use to cut grooves so that we can tuck our fabric into them. And as you can see, I've got pen all over my fingers now. <laughs> and also I somehow drew on my table. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully that'll come off. What can I say? These balls are easier to use. <laughs> so let's go ahead and cut out the lines now. And this is, this kind of takes a little bit of practice. The first couple times you try, you might mess up. So I just want to warn you, you may mess up a little bit, but it's actually, uh, it, it comes easier after you do it a couple times, I promise. So w the trick though, is to make sure you don't, especially with a hot knife, that you don't go too deep into the ball. This thing will just melt the foam. I mean, it will cut so easily. So it's really easy to go too far. So it's better to just go lighter. And then if you need to, you can always go back and cut a little bit deeper if you have to. And you don't wanna to cut too deep either. Um, you only need just enough so that you can tuck your fabric in. But if you cut too deep, what'll happen is the lines that you, the grooves that you create may be too loose for the fabric to actually stay in there once you're tucking it. So if it's like too wide, then you go to tuck your fabric and the fabric just won't stay because there's nothing to hold it there, if that makes any sense. So what we're gonna do is just start at one of the, see how, see how easily that just starts to cut right in? I mean, I barely touched it with my knife. So I'm just barely touching it. And I'm just cutting right along that line, just like that. Not perfect, but it's okay. <laughs> if I were to guess, I would say that that was probably, I don't know, an eighth of an inch in, maybe a little bit less. And like I said in the beginning, you can actually use an X-Acto knife for this. And then you won't have the issue of this cutting too deep, but it is a little bit harder to cut with an X-Acto knife. You can see with the hot knife, it just slices right through like it's nothing, which is very nice. Just don't burn yourself or cut yourself with this thing. Make sure that you don't do this with kids. If your kids want to make this ornament, then I would definitely encourage you to cut the ball out for them. All right, there you go. So those are all cut out. I set my knife to the side and I'm actually going to just unplug it. All right, so now before we start to put the fabric on the ball, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a really light sanding of any parts that I feel like are going to show through the ball because the pieces of fabric are going to be laying directly on the ball. We're not folding and pinning like we do in the regular quilted ornaments that we do. And so there's not gonna be layers of fabric to hide any imperfections from the foam. So just to do a quick little smoothing out, I just like to kind of run just kind of run my sandpaper over until it feels smooth. 
Like when you feel one of the parts that you haven't sanded yet, you'll actually be able to feel that line. And here, it's almost to where I can't feel it. Even though I can still kind of see that line a little bit, it feels smooth. So just do that until you can feel no bumpiness. Now you will have some roughness at the top and bottom and along your grooves, but don't worry about those because you're gonna be covering that part up with trim, plus you're about to tuck fabric in, so you won't even feel any of that. But it's just kind of like these sections in these panels, in these open panel parts that you're worrying about. All right, let's go ahead and start with some fabric. So what we're gonna do is just take a piece of the fabric and we're just gonna layer it, or lay it, right over top of one of those panels. And we're going to start at one end and using our tucking tool we're just going to start to very gently tuck this fabric into the grooves kind of just like that now what i like to do is go down a little ways on one side trying to keep it centered and you'll find as you're tucking that sometimes your piece of fabric can kind of go off to the side and kind of wonky but in order to stop that from happening i like to go down one side a little ways and then come back and go down the opposite side and one of the things that you'll find is when you're going down another side your other side might try to pop back out so it's kind of a balancing act you just want to kind of go side to side and i'm also trying to hold this facing up towards my camera so that you can see it and I can't really see what I'm doing very well here. Now I want to kind of like redo that. See how I'm kind of like losing part of my fabric here. see how you just kind of have to play with it and my fabric piece is a little bit big which I kind of told you in the beginning is the case with my template but that's just because I like to have too much rather than get down to the bottom and not have enough if your piece is too big you can always give it a little bit of a trim before you tuck it because that can be hard to work with too but this piece actually kind of worked out nice, I think. Now, if you've got a little bit of buckling on the sides, but you know your trim is wide enough to hide that, then don't worry about it too much. If you have a really thin trim, then you're gonna to wanna to try to keep this buckling to a minimum. So for example, if you're using like a rat tail cord or something like that, which is pretty thin, then you would wanna make sure that you cover up any of that buckling or hide it as best you can. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little mini scissors here and I'm just gonna kinda trim off this little bit of excess because now keep in mind that you are gonna be tucking in another piece of fabric right beside this one. So you need to make sure that you're gonna be able to tuck that second piece of fabric in and have room to do that. And if you've got a whole bunch of extra fabric sticking out, Whoops, let's straighten that out. If you've got a whole bunch of extra fabrics in the way, then that's gonna create an issue when you go to put your next panel of fabric in. So right now I'm basically just trying to smooth out my edges as best I can. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna trim off the excess over here. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and get started with the next one. Same thing, I'm gonna just like lay it on there how I want it. 
and then start at one end and just work my way down. So I can see that I kind of I, first of all, I can see that I have a little bit of extra here on the side, which is making me afraid I might not have enough over here. So I think what I'm going to do is just pull this out a little bit and just kind of shift it over. And the top came out too. <laughs> Normally when I'm making these, I hold, like I have a habit of holding it up against my body, like right up against my stomach kind of to help me hold them. And I'm not doing that obviously right now because I'm trying to hold it under my camera. So that's not helping. This side is not going on or this piece is not going on as easily as my first one did. Let me go ahead and trim up some of this excess. All right, and now one thing to keep in mind as well is that the ends are gonna be covered by trim. Um, let me just show you. See how the end of this, the bottom of this has lots of trim? So you're never gonna see any, like if you've got a little bit of messiness at the bottom, you're never gonna see that when you cover it with the trim. Same for the top because you'll have the trim up top plus your hanger, plus whatever other embellishments that you decide you wanna add. If you add a bow, for example, then you definitely won't see any messiness that you end up with at the top. So don't be too picky about your top and bottom if you plan to use a lot of embellishments. All right, here's what I've got. So I ended up having to kind of hold it up against my body in order to tuck it in. That's just, I find it easier that way. But here's what we have. It's pretty smooth. I mean, I've got a little bit of imperfections here, but I know that all that is going to be covered up when I add my trim. So that is actually what we are going to do next. And actually, I lied. We're actually going to put the hanger on first. The reason why is because that way, when we pin this hanger into the end, then we can put the trim going back and forth over all of these raw edges, but it'll keep covering the trim even more, and that will give the trim a little extra security, especially if it's a trim like this where... Um, it's this is like a sparkle string and you can see here on the end how it's kind of fraying it's a little bit weaker so it's better to give it as much extra security as possible so let me just trim that off and what we're gonna do is make a loop with this trim and then stick it like hold it over the one end of your ball doesn't matter which end and then stick a couple of pins to hold it in place. If it's something like, if you're using something like this, then it's best to use a couple of pins. I don't know if this pin has a point. Oh, I don't think it does. I apparently have a section that does not want to be pinned I'm using a paper towel to push it in <laughs> whoops this is kind of a weaker a weaker string so okay so I'm not gonna like really put too much weight on that just yet I'm, I'm gonna wait until I get my trim going across there to give it a little bit of extra security so what we're gonna do is grab the glue you could use this. This is Beacon's Fabric Tack, and there's also another glue that I like, which is called Beacon's 3-in-1 Advanced Glue. Um, the Advanced Glue is a little bit 
you don't want to mess up with it because if you do it will leave some stains on your fabric but it is very very strong so I mean that's a good glue and I've always used it but I feel like this one's a little bit more forgiving whatever you use you want it to be kind of tacky and you want it to dry want it to dry clear so and you also want it to be able to grab your fabric and what I'm gonna do is just starting right where my um, hanger is I'm going to just make a thin line of glue oops let me get back in the camera all the way down to the bottom and now I'm going to take the end of my trim and put this right over top of that hanger and then down over top of that glue and you can see why I prefer to use these trims that are really wide. <laughs> Very forgiving and they hide all your mistakes. And then what we're going to do is just continue this back around. Hang on, let me just wipe off the tip of my, my glue here. just like that. Now what I'm going to do is weave this through my hanger and then continue it down the next the next line and you want to make sure that you kind of see how if I didn't really get a lot of glue up on the top there I'm going to add a little extra glue because I want this to stay in place up there on that hanger And then I'll just go ahead and bring it down. I touched my glue down there with my back hand here, so I'm trying not to touch anything. <laughs> I don't want to ruin my fabric. And now I'm going to bring that right back up the opposite side. And then I'm going to go ahead and start bringing it down this side and then if you, you probably notice I'm just trying to keep my fingers on the poles because I want to make sure that that fabric or that uh, glue is grabbing onto the fabric and we've just got one more side to go All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim off my excess. First of all, I'm going to add a little extra glue up there because I didn't quite go up to the very tippy top. And once I know that that's grabbed, you can see why you need to get this tacky glue. I'm going to go ahead and trim this. And so once that's dry, this hanger will be way more secure because of all those layers of glue on top, which is nice. But what we're going to do just to give it one last little added bit of security is we're going to take a pin and with a bead and put it up on top just for decoration. So I'm taking one of my tiny little clear beads. And I'm just going to pop that right down in the center. That's going to help hold down that last little bit of trim and give it a little extra security. So beautiful, right? <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the other embellishments, which is just some beads and some rhinestones. Now what I did here on my original one was I did three clear beads on each panel starting in the center and then two on either end so I'm gonna do the same thing here and what I did was I did some beads and then I also used some tiny little seed beads 
on top. So let me get those ready. I've got glue all over my fingers, <laughs> so they're trying to stick to me. And I'm just going to take a pen and then pop on one of my little silver. Oh, it would help if I was in camera, huh? I took my pen and I popped on one of those little silver seed beads and then I'm just going to stick a clear crystal bead right underneath of it. And then looking at one of my panels, I'm just going to place this right in the center of one of them. Now you can be, um, if you want to be really exact, you could use your tape measure and just measure the distance between the top and bottom of each panel and then place your bead right dead center. Or you can eyeball it, which is what I'm doing. <laughs> and then I'm going to place one on either side of that too. And I'm just gonna go halfway between the end and the bead that I just put on. That's kind of going in on an angle. Let me straighten that out a little bit. There we go. Same with that one. And there we go. So what I'm gonna do is just do that all the way around. I'll speed up the video for that part. Okay, there we go. Isn't that pretty? I love it. <laughs> so if you wanted to, you could add the rhinestones like I did here. I just use tweezers to hold them, put a teeny dab of glue on the back. You could use a toothpick too to just kind of dip um, into a little bit of glue and then put it on the back of the rhinestone and then stick them on. I'm not going to do that here in this video because I feel like I've already gone a little bit long. Um, but And plus, I don't think you need me to show you how to do that. <laughs> but anyway, you could do all sorts of different things with this. So just imagine like different colors, different trims and different beads, all the different things that you could do. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that it gave you lots of ideas for different ways that you could make this kind of ornament. All right. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got any questions, just put them right below the video in the comments and I will help you out the best that I can. Happy ornamenting.